Parthiban, who had been listening to Karagalan's story without much sympathy from the beginning, now also felt heartbroken. He wiped the tears from his eyes. O oh king! I never dreamed that love for a woman could cause such suffering. We all did not know that such an experience had befallen them on the day of the prince's christening. Therefore, we were surprised to see them depressed. We tried to cheer them up with all kinds of jokes. I remember all that now. It's coming. He said. Yes, you talked a lot. You looked to cheer me up. You talked about the great things I was going to do during my reign. You expanded the Chola Empire that day from Sri Lanka to the Himalayas. And you conquered kingdoms across the seas. I still remember all those talks. That's all I have. I also remember how painful it was. Then one day Nandini sent me to the Palavur Palace. A struggle arose in my mind whether to go or not. Finally, I decided to go. I wanted to ask her about my doubts about many things. I wanted to know the truth of her birth. I had a suspicion in my mind that there was something to do with my father's fainting at that temple and the fact that he saw Nandini there as an accident. You will remember that the emperor soon recovered from his fainting spell that day, but never regained his old health. I thought that talking to Nandini might reveal some mystery that I had not understood till then. I kept it all as a joke, but the reason I actually went was because of her magnetism. I deluded myself by teaching other reasons. Pulvatera Yar is not in town. There is no one to stop me in his palace, there were no people there who knew about the old friendship between me and Nandini. They thought that Rajakumaran, who wore a princely crown, was coming to get blessings from the queens of Palyavur Palace. I met Nandini in the Lata Mandapam in the palace garden. Pardhiba. Have you heard the experiences of seafarers? In some places in the ocean there are currents of immeasurable force and speed. If ships get caught in those currents, they will be stranded in no time. When I was in Nandini's presence, I reached the fate of a ship caught in the ocean current. My body, soul and heart have become a thousand knots. The words on my tongue surprised me. Oh! What are we talking about? While a page was appearing in the chest, the mouth was talking about something. Nandini expressed her happiness about crowning me a prince. I'm not happy about it at all. I said. Why, she asked. What is this question you ask? How can I be happy? Are you the one who has done this injustice? I said. She acted like she didn't understand what I was saying. In this way the talk continued to grow. I blamed her for rejecting my love and falling in love with Vera Pandian. I also spoke harshly about the old man marrying a scumbag. Prince. First you killed my love, then you killed my lover before my eyes, it seems their mind will not be satisfied unless they kill me too. They don't like me being alive. Good, kill me too and fulfill their wish. Saying that, she took out the small knife tucked in her waist and held it out. Why am I killing you? Aren't you the one who is torturing me alive? I said. In the end, my mouth uttered words that make me feel ashamed even now. Even so, nothing bad has happened. Say a word. Tell this old man to leave. I leave this kingdom for you. Let's both board a ship and cross the sea to a distant land. I said. Nandini laughs terribly hearing this. Even now I get goosebumps thinking about it. What do you say we do when we cross the sea and go to a distant land? Chopping wood for a living? Or survive by growing banana plantations, she said. You don't like that. She grew up in the priest's house and became the queen of Palvur, didn't she? I said. There is no intention of being satisfied with this. She is said to have sat as an empress on the throne of the Chola Empire. Tell me if you like. If you want to kill both the Palyavatarayas, put Sundara Chola in prison, and make me their crown prince, she said. Oh! What horrible words are you saying? I said. Wasn't it a terrible thing to kill the wounded Pandian before my eyes, asked Nandini. This started to fuel my anger. I cursed her with some mad words and left. 
even then she didn't let me go. Prince. Come back to me if you ever change your mind. Come when their hearts allow to make me emperor, she said. He who left her that day never saw her again, said Aditha Karigalan. Hearing all this, Parthipendra, who was horrified and stunned, said, O king! Is it possible for such a giantess to exist in the world? It would be better if we did not meet her again. He said and sighed. He gave some reason why I should not go to Tanjore. Actually Nandini is the reason why I am not going to Tanjore and want to bring my father to Kanchi. O king! If you are afraid of a nasty woman, why don't you go to Tanjore? What will she do? Do you fear that she will kill you with poison? No, Pardhiba, no. You still do not understand me well. I am not afraid that she will kill me. I am afraid that she will make me do as she pleases. Put your father in jail. Drive your sister out of the country. Kill this old man and put me on the throne. If that Mahyamajana says that again, I am afraid that I will feel like doing something like that. Friend. Either Nandini must die, or I must die, or both of us must die. Otherwise I have no peace of mind in this life. Said Kari Gallan. O king! What is this talk? Why do you want to die? Give me permission. I will go to Sri Lanka. I will immediately go to Tanjavar and kill her. Let the woman's hatred come to me. We will go to Misiram and other countries and establish Tamil bravery and the tiger flag there. Pardhiba. Do you know that chastity is not regulated in all those countries as it is in this country? The kings will take any woman under their rule as per their wish and add them to that temple, said Kari Kalan. Before Parthiban could retort to this, Thirukovalar Malayaman arrived there. There is no story as wonderful as the story of Aravan in this world. Not in any country that you have been telling about. But you are still talking without sleep? Parthibendra. Don't you remember that you have to leave for Sri Lanka tomorrow? Said. That's what we've been talking about. Said Parthipendra.